All right, for this video, we're going to need, or for this activity rather, we're going to need a couple of tools. So first off, you're going to need a unit circle, which you should have gotten from me. And we're going to need one of these. This is a special right triangle. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we're going to need something like this. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And then we're going to need a total of six different colored pencils or pens, whatever you want to use. Um, I'm going to use, and then we're going to have this in two parts. So three of one color, three of a different color. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, if you notice, we have the hypotenuse, and then we have a short length and a long length. Okay, so we're going to start in this angle here would be the 60 degree angle. This up here would be the 30 degree angle. So we're going to start by creating a 60 degree angle in quadrant one here and pick one of your pe colored pencils. I'll use green for this one. And so we're going to line this up so we have the center all the way out to the outside edge. So I want to do that a couple times, make sure we get a nice green line there. And then on that line, I'm just going to write that this is... 60 degrees. So that's my 60 degree angle there. And then if you flip it this way, so again, so the smaller angle now is at the center, still in quadrant one. We're going to use a different color. So I'm going to set that aside. I'll do red this time. And we're going to create a 30 degree angle here in quadrant one, starting at the center here. So again, write down that that's 30 degrees. Set that pencil aside, and now I'm going to grab my next, uh, my other triangle. So this is my 45, 45, 90 triangle. So it doesn't matter which, so we don't want to set, set up the right angle. The right angle is going to be on the outside, but it doesn't matter which side we use because it's going to be the same. And we're going to do a, another line from the center to the outside edge. And we'll label that one as 45 degrees. All right, so make sure that you have everything labeled like I did there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pick our other, so I'm going to set these aside. So take the other three colors that we had. And we're going to, at the very top here, we're going to write down three words in three different colors. So I'll use this black, and I'm going to write down short equals. Pick a different color. I'll use the blue and I'll write medium. And then for the other one, I'll use the third color and I'm going to write down the word long. So we're going to have short, medium, and long. So now starting with that one that we had that was short and let's use a straight edge. So what we're going to do, cancel that. Actually, we're going to start, so again, using whatever color you used for uh, writing the word long. So I used purple. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to draw a vertical line for the longest side. So starting up here where we had a 60-degree six, angle, I'm going to draw a vertical line Whoops, going down to the x-axis. And then with the color that we used for medium, which was blue, doesn't matter if we use, we're just making a vertical line. So we're going to draw a vertical line now using our medium length. I'm going to have to sharpen that one. And then with the short, which I used as black, we're going to draw a vertical line with the x-axis for that one. So make sure that you have your three vertical lines. Again, your long would be in the long color, medium, in your medium color and the short in your short color. All right, so now we're going to go horizontally. And so we're going to do, again, starting with whatever color we used for short that we left off at. In this case, I used black. I'm going to draw a horizontal line going from the center to this purple line. If you want to use a straight edge, you can. I'm just going to eyeball it. OK, so there's my short distance. And then the color we used for medium, we'll just go underneath here. Man, these pencils suck. There we go. Draw a line to your medium. And then lastly, for short, which I had as, whoops, as my uh, black one. I'm sorry, nope, I'm on long, sorry. So to go to the long distance, we're going to go all the way. So I have purple for my long. Go all the way down here. 
Okay, so again, make sure that this line here, that's your shorter horizontal line, is using a short color, that your medium color line is using a medium color, and that your long line, horizontal line, matches your long color. That's important. All right, so let's go back up to the top now, next to where we had the short, medium, and long. Let's actually write down some values here. So the short distance, that is going to be one half. Now you might be wondering, what is this all related to? Well, this is all connected to the unit circle, where if we're dealing with a circle that had a radius of one unit, the ratio between the short side and the long side of a 30-60-90 triangle and the 45-45, and the two sides for a 45-45-90 triangle would have these values. And so the shortest distance, again, would be one half. The medium distance, which would be from the 45, 45, 90, that's going to be square root of 2 over 2. And the long distance, which I had in purple, is going to be square root of 3 over 2. So write down those values. So 1 half square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2. So now what we're going to do is going back over here at these points, we're going to write down what those coordinates would be. So again, we're not, we're not getting there by traveling across the radii. What we're going to do is to get to this point, we're going to travel horizontally and vertically just like we would for any uh, coordinate if we were going to be graphing it. So we're going to start with the horizontal distance and then the vertical distance. So if you notice a horizontal distance, we have a short distance and then we're going to go a short distance across and then a long distance up. So that short distance is one half. And the long distance is square root of 3 over 2. Whoops. So square root of 3 over 2. And then it's sticking with the 30, 60, 90 triangle, so I can keep it the same colors. Uh, getting, getting down to this point here, I would have to go a long distance horizontally. And so the long distance, remember, is square root of 3 over 2. And then we would go a short distance up, 1 half. And then to get to this point, it's the same distance horizontally and vertically. It's a medium distance. It's square root of 2 over 2. All right. And then the other thing I want to mention, too, before we go any further is let's talk about these key points. So again, this is working with what we call a unit circle. So the radius would be one unit. So that means going to these values... We would just think of that just as we normally would with any other coordinates. So this is one unit over and zero units up. So that'll be the coordinate one, zero. This up here, this is a distance of one unit, but it would be on the x-axis where x is zero, y is one. This point over here, this would be the point negative one, zero. And then this point down here would be the point zero, negative one. Okay, so what we've basically done is we've focused on quadrant one. So you can see that this is the, so the sine, so we'll take it to the sine and cosine here in a little bit, but these are the coordinates that we're going to need. And we're going to continue this pattern all the way around. So what, what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause this video, and I want you to go back and use your different shapes, both your uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle and your 45, 45, 90 triangle to make the angles in quadrant two, make the angles in quadrant three, and make the angles in quadrant four. Okay, you don't have to do all the vertical and horizontal lines. Just what I'm referring to is just the lines from the center to the outside circle. So just make those lines in the other three quadrants. And then when you get finished with that, I want you to well, actually, you know, just do that. So pause the video, hit play when you have all of the lines created in the four and all uh, in the other three quadrants. All right, so how did you do? So your picture should now look something like mine, where we have all four quadrants now with these lines connecting from the center to the outside of the circle at these different angle measurements. In fact, that's what we're going to do next. I want you to figure out, so use some patterns. Well, actually, let's start with this. So let's do these horizontal and vertical angles. So this makes a right angle with the x-axis. The y-axis makes a right angle with the x-axis. So this is 90 degrees. 
This would be halfway around the circle, so that's going to be at 180 degrees. And again, this is another right angle, so this would be another 90 degrees plus 180 would be 270 degrees. And then this would bring you all the way back around, so this is zero degrees, which is also 360 degrees, so those would be the same. So what I want you guys to do is look at some patterns here because that's going to help you make the most sense of this. I want you to look at some patterns, and I want you to continue to go around the circle and find all of the angle measurements that we'd have at all these different colored lines that you guys drew in earlier. So go ahead and pause the video, look at, study the patterns in the first quadrant, and then transfer those patterns as you go around. So as you get all the way over, I'll just give you a hint. If you do everything correctly, let me grab all my different colors here. So this angle down here, when you get all finished in quadrant uh, four, this should be at 300 degrees. This one here should be at 315 degrees. And then this one here would be at 330 degrees. So I want you guys to continue this pattern all the way around. So do quadrants two and three, see if you can figure out those angle measurements. So go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you got those angle measurements correct. All right, let's see how you did here. So continuing across, should have had 120, if you can't read my writings, 120 degrees. This is 135, 150, then we had the 180, and then 210, 225, 240 degrees, and then we had the 270, and then 300, 315, and then 330 degrees, and then back at 360 or zero degrees. So that represents our degree measurements. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue, notice we have these, these coordinates on the outside here, we're gonna continue those coordinates all the way around. So I want you guys to think, so this operates just like a coordinate plane, where to the left when, uh, of zero, x is negative, and above zero, y is positive. And again, down here in quadrant three, to the left of zero is negative, and below uh, zero is also negative. So I want you guys to come up with the coordinates of these other nine locations in quadrants two, three, and four, using what we know from quadrant one. So go ahead and pause the video and find those other coordinates for the other three quadrants. So good luck. All right, so let's see how you did. So the way that I want you to think of this is I, I want you to uh, keep in mind this idea of short, medium, and long. And just remember that short is one half, medium is squared to two over two, and long is squared to three over two. So to travel to this location over here, so at 120 degrees, in order to travel that distance, I'd have to go a short distance to the left and then up a long distance. So it's gonna be negative one half squared to three over two. To get to this one, I have to, so the middle one is always easy. The middle one is always the same distance horizontally and vertically, which is always your medium, squared to two over two. You just gotta think, is it negative or positive? So if it's over here in quadrant two, at 135 degrees, we're gonna go a medium distance over, so negative squared to two over two, and up a medium distance, a positive squared to two over two. And then to get to this coordinate, we would go a long distance over, so negative squared to three over two, and then up a short distance, one half. And then we can continue that pattern in the other two quadrants. So here we would go a long distance to the left, so negative square root of three over two, and a short distance down, which is negative one half. To get to this one, we'd have to go over a medium distance of negative square root of two over two, and then down a medium distance of negative square root of two over two. And then for this one, continuing the same pattern, we go a short distance and then down a long distance. So negative one half, negative square root of three over two, and then you can see how that continues over here in quadrant four. So how do we use all this? What is the point of all this? Well, this is to help us find the sine and cosine and eventually even the tangent of different angles. So I want you to think about all of these coordinates are ordered pairs, where the x comes first, the y comes second. Same thing is true with trigonometry. So they go in alphabetical order for x and y, so they're going to go in alphabetical order for our trig values, cosine and sine. So we would say the cosine of theta sine of theta. That's the order. So this cosine of theta is your x value, the sine of theta is your y value. So if I wanted to know what's the cosine of 30 degrees, I'm going to think in my head the cosine of 30 degrees, that's the x value. So when I'm going over here to 30 degrees, what am I doing? I'm going 
on the x-axis, I'm going a long distance. So that long distance is square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30, de uh, 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Or if I ask you to find the sine of um, 150 degrees. Sine of 150 degrees, I think, okay, so 180 degrees is here. So 150 degrees is really close to it, 30 degrees away. And to get there, if I'm doing the, uh, what did I say? Did I say the sine? I can't remember. Let's say sine. So if I was going to find the sine of 150 degrees, I'm going to go a long distance over and a short distance up. So that short distance up would be my y value, my sine value. So the sine of 150 degrees would be 1 half. Or if I wanted to find the cosine of 315 degrees. So I think, well, where is 315 degrees? That's over here in quadrant 4. Any of them, by the way, that end in 5 is going to be one of these that's just square root of 2 over 2. So I just got to figure out, well, what is it? Is it positive or negative? And so if I said, what's the cosine of 315 degrees? I'm going to think in my head, okay, so I'm going to go a medium length. So the cosine is the x-axis, so that's going to be positive. So it's going to be a positive square root of 2 over 2. So that's how this all works when we're dealing with degrees. In the next video, we'll talk about how this all works in radians.